Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back. Um, so, we were talking about uh, governing equations uh, for uh, chemical reacting for flows that is uh, combustion uh, flows involving combustion and we arrived at the equations for uh, conservation of mass, momentum, uh, species and energy. And we found out that while those equations were complex in itself, it was not closed in that several of these things like reaction rates, like species diffusion velocity, like pressure, like um, uh, 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 heat flux vector Q, uh, these things uh, needed uh, uh, needed uh, supplemental information or or uh, or auxiliary information or auxiliary equations or constitutive relations as such to basically uh, close this equation. So, uh, first things first that is we need to understand what is species diffusion velocity. So, if you look into that, uh, this is the species diffusion velocity V i that is essentially given in a very implicit complex form and uh, this is uh, given as uh, this uh, in this equation this the gradient of the species mole fraction that is a gradient of x i is given like this where this species diffusion velocity V i appear also note that the species diffusion velocity V j appear and also there are several other things appear. Okay. Uh, but this is the most important part you see where V i appears also gradient of pressure appears, body forces appear, gradient of temperature appears um, also right. And uh, but we will we'll, we will see that we will mainly focus on this and we will tell you what the other things like these, these are etc. are. But this is the main uh, uh, point of our will be the point of our focus and we will simplify this to uh, uh, arrive at simpler equations ok. But this is the most generalized form you need to know the most generalized form and then you need to know how to arrive at a simpler form because otherwise your knowledge will always be partial. So, we uh, will always as you know that it though it looks uh, complicated and though it looks involved we will start with the full complex form and then we will simplify this to arrive at a generalized form and these simplified forms will be used for further analysis of different kind of flames and combustion systems. Pressure tensor yes as you know that first is this uh, of course, this pressure tensor consists of this uh, uh, thermodynamic or pressure P uh, and plus of course, uh, this uh, uh, or uh, this can actually have a thermodynamic pressure and a dynamic pressure we will come into that. But uh, essentially this also contains this uh, uh, this viscosity and the velocity gradients ok. And uh, then um, also uh, we will see that uh, this contains a bulk viscosity that is kappa uh, and this will be only important in high speed flows and will not be, but it can not only in high speed flows it can be uh, important. Uh, 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 this is the uh, difference uh, times this uh, velocity vector that you come here and this is actually your um, the strain rate uh, uh, things that we see come and this is the dynamic velocity part that we are uh, fairly uh, common in fluid mechanics. So, uh, this will essentially we say that we can be able to neglect this part and um, uh, heat flux vector as you will see that this heat flux vector is given by this is the thermal conduction term this is the thermal conductivity. Uh, And this is essentially the enthalpy transport uh, this is the heat flux uh, that is arising due to different heat contents and the diffusion velocity. So, diffusion velocities can also cause thermal transport and this is essentially as you will again see that this is a kind of a uh, heat flux due to once again due to diffusion velocities and uh, arises due to um, uh, due to this uh, difference of the uh, species diffusion velocities and also there can be a uh, radiation uh, uh, term ok that is. Uh, the from Q radiation. So, and uh, but most importantly and uh, of course, these are important, but the most important thing in combustion uh, uh, in this constitutive relations is of course, the reaction rate that is omega i. So, this reaction rate you see that we have uh, 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 taken up reaction rate in this form that is omega i, this is w i the difference is this uh, molecular weight w i because uh, this is a this equations as you see is written in rho i 
that is the density of the ith species or the mass fraction of the ith species. So, mm, that is where this, uh, this small unit change come. This uh, note that uh, please note that this units of uh, small w i is grams per cubic centimeters per second whereas units of uh, omega i that we discussed previously for which we derived this law of mass action that is omega i is essentially is equal to nu double i double dash minus nu i dash uh, times um, uh, k times product of j is equal to 1 to n c j um, uh, times nu j dashed uh, these things um, that we discussed. Um, uh, so, uh, this is the difference is uh, this uh, w i which is a molecular weight uh, otherwise everything is same. So, now uh, of course, this was uh, true uh, if we consider only, only considering only one step reaction, but then when there is uh, the contribution from this. Uh, um, uh, from uh, omega i can come from uh, k reactions. Okay, so we need to consider all the reactions, and this is the most generalist form. And as you remember, that this part of the equation is nothing but our uh, reaction rate constant for the kth reaction. And this other part, this was essentially the law of um, mass action. Okay. So, with this we could uh, we could uh, write this uh, reaction rate form which is not very difficult. So, once again I am uh, emphasizing that we are writing in a generalized form because this will give you an idea of what e everything that goes into this uh, this uh, into combustion and then we will simplify it. So, do not don't, uh, don't worry about that. So, uh, uh, discussion now if you discuss this uh, what, what goes into the diffusion velocity uh, that is uh, if you go back to this equation that is gradient of this x i. Uh, was uh, given by this um, uh, uh, this this thing is uh, this uh, given by this uh, mm, uh, summation i is equal to one to n x i times x j divided by d i j times um, uh, v j by um, uh, 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 so. Uh, uh, we were um, discussing the diffusion velocity and this uh, gradient of x i is equal to summation uh, given uh, is equal to uh, this uh, this thing where you see uh, diffusion velocity of the species i if you are interested in that and of course that is uh, that is dependent on the gradient of the of the of x i which is the gradient of the mole fraction of the species i but then uh, uh, that is also connected to several things it is an implicit equation that you give uh, and this is of course as a binary diffusion uh, coefficient dij and uh, but the velocity of the j species is also involved and there are several other things okay so this first term is essentially comes from the concentration gradient okay this is the fickian diffusion term uh, essentially so the concentration gradient that is um, this is the fickian diffusion term this is the concentration gradient and uh, and of course you see that there can be a pressure gradient also can induce this thing and there can be a body force gradient uh, body force that is involved here and then there can be a temperature gradient that is a sorted effect uh, which we found that to causes the counter gradient or gradient diffusion of hydrogen or soot uh, his light species or heavy species respectively all right so um, uh, but the most important term is this one and we will come to this okay so this is the concentration gradient term this is the uh, pressure gradient term this is the body force term and this is the temperature gradient term which is a sort of effect so now uh, pressure we have discussed in uh, fluid mechanics test uh, of course uh, we, uh, we, uh, we can discuss you can discuss find more about this in a fluid mechanics course but of course the gradient of pressure in a in a, in a in the the main force that drives fluid uh, is the gradient of pressure okay and uh, uh, then the, the the acceleration term is essentially the the, mm, the on the left hand side what you see this convective terms uh, time and um, uh, and and the and the convective uh, the temporal term and the convective terms these are like temporal acceleration and spatial acceleration respectively and then you can have viscous forces uh, which are like uh, due to uh, this uh, uh, the the coming from the viscosity times d o d to do to u do y u square this sort of things and uh, but here the uh, additional complexity is that there is temperature and hence density variations are inherently important in flames mm, constant density is a poor assumption and buoyancy effect is inherently important and role of electromagnetic force body force is uh, not very clear okay so we'll not discuss much about this uh, uh, but uh, typically what we'll see is that um, uh, in we'll see in later also that uh, we do not 
pressure, yes, of course, it drives the flow. It, it is used for understanding the overall uh, um, overall uh, 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 flows of the system. Uh, but uh, in combustion, uh, as at least in subsonic combustion, the pressure change is small. But the, the pressure can become very important when you have certain dynamics inside a combustor, like um, thermoacoustic oscillations, which are self-excited oscillations, creating large uh, fluctuations in pressure. Anyway, so so we will come back to the discussion on the heat flux. Um, vector q vector. So, uh, this uh, heat flux vector uh, heat flux can cross this control surface because of temperature gradient uh, uh, conduction due to temperature gradient. Um, this is essentially the, the heat transfer due to different heat contents of the different species okay. and uh, this heat diffusion for different CPI it will be we will see that when this the different CPs and the specific heats of the of the different species are different then this term will be uh, will be important. But when this is um, when all specific heats are essentially can be considered into an average specific heat or when this um, uh, or when the, there will be a we will use a constant specific heat for all the species then this will be equal to 0. And then there can be concentration due to uh, heat transfer due to concentration gradient which is this do for effect um, which is not uh, of much importance. Uh, um, uh, will not really consider this and then they will consider radiation of course, that can be important and uh, especially it is important in flames which involves lot of soot because as you discussed that soot are essentially black body uh, uh, black bodies and uh, this uh, soot um, emit radiation which are like similar to that of a black body radiation. So, in those cases suppose in a combustor you have strong non premix combustion if you have a strong soot emission that can reduce the temperature of the flame and that can cause a lot of heat flux into the combustor walls also right. So, this sort of things we to consider uh, depending on the situation. So, once again this is the heat flux uh, due to the conduction uh, which is due to temperature gradient. Uh, this is uh, the due to uh, different heat contents um, and this is heat transfer due to concentration gradient that is a Dufour effect and, uh, and the radiation QR uh, can also become very important, but this can be actually very complex and uh, to calculate. Okay, but uh, typically for premix flames or lean premix flames uh, which does not involve much soot, we really do not um, will not really also consider this radiation as, as such um, because uh, um, uh, those uh, uh, radiation is not of much importance. But understand that in sooting flames this is very very important. Um, but of course, it is very much uh, uh, situation dependent on which situation you are talking about. All right. So, uh, another thing is that uh, very important is of course, the auxiliary equations that is a uh, uh, ideal gas equation of state P is equal to rho times R 0 T. R 0 is the universal gas constant and this thing downstairs is very important that is the mean molecular weight. Okay. So, essentially P is uh, P is equal to rho times R 0 times T divided by mean molecular weight and mean molecular weight is nothing but summation. Mm, I is equal to 1 to n x i w i x i is the mole fraction and this is also e equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n y i mass fraction by the uh, molecular weight inverse ok. So, this is the mean molecular weight formula which is which will come very handy when you want to calculate uh, something like um, pressure from a uh, given um, uh, data set etcetera. Okay, or you want to estimate pressure in the equation. Uh, so, then um, uh, energy enthalpy relation y h that is a specific enthalpy is nothing but the sum of the enthalpy times their mass fractions. Okay. Enthalpy y i times h i, y i is the mass fraction of the species i inside the system and h i is the is the specific enthalpy of the ith species and of course, that is equal to internal energy plus p, p plus e plus p by rho. Now, the most important thing as we have discussed is that this H i this specific enthalpy consists of two parts. This is the enthalpy of formation which is defined at T 0 and it is actually contains the total bond energy of the total um, uh, um, essentially the heat of combustion is carried into this uh, enthalpy of uh, formation um, which is the total enthalpy of the products minus total enthalpy of the reactants. And this is the sensible enthalpy that is the enthalpy of this at, of, uh, at a temperature T with respect to T 0. Note that this enthalpy of formation is defined at T 0 ok uh, the reference temperature. So, the enthalpy sensible enthalpy can be written as integral T 0 to at uh, sensible enthalpy at temperature T with respect to the reference temperature T 0 can be refer can be written as integral of uh, T 0 to T C P i d T where the C P i is the specific heat of the ith species integrated over temperature. 
and this is very important uh, conversion between mole and mass fractions. So, the conversion this is very very important and it comes extremely handy in different situations. So, to given if you are given mass fractions y i and you need to convert to mole fraction x i you need to know the uh, molecular weights of the of the different species involved and the x i that is the mole fraction of the ith species is nothing but the mass fraction of the ith species divided by the molecular weight of the ith species divided by summation over j equal to 1 to n uh, uh, y j divided by w j. So, it is the summed over all the species ok. So, uh, uh, that is the thing and if you are given a uh, mole fraction uh, and you want to convert to uh, uh, to if you are given mole fraction and you want to convert to mass fractions this is also very important because then there is given by x i times w i divided by summation j is equal to 1 to n x j y j. Now, the why is this very important because you see in combustions uh, in the if you consider the species equation say you are basically deriving the equation for the mass fraction of the species i right, but then you go to law of mass action that you have the on the right hand side you have the reaction rate and the reaction rate of course, it contains of the law of mass action which is that k where the reaction rate constants times the product of the concentrations of C j times the nu j that is the stoichiometric coefficient raised to the power exponents. So, this C j is actually in uh, essentially in concentration which is typically comes in moles uh, mole fractions right. Uh, that is a moles per uh, cubic centimeter or, or we can convert that to from mole fractions. So, those are in essentially units of moles. So, from that in the this uh, species equation itself you have these two different kinds and you need to understand the conversion factors of the conversion uh, methods um, uh, to come from one uh, from alpha mole fraction to mass fraction and from mass fraction to mole fraction. Now, as we said that uh, when you do diffusion we will neglect all other effects uh, in the for this uh, for the, this class and we will arrive at this simplified formula for diffusion ok and this is given by gradient of this. Uh, so, what we have taken is that uh, we have just taken this uh, if you go back to this uh, complicated formula for diffusion um, um, if we remove all these things. Mm, now, we what we will do is that we will just uh, we will just re remove this part, we will just remove this part and we will only focus on this part right. And once we focus on this part, we can essentially take uh, we we, what we can do is that uh, we can we will see that we can simplify this part uh, even more and we can uh, write this as um, this form which is given by uh, log of uh, gradient of this log of x i is nothing but summation j is equal to 1 to n x j divided by d i j which is the diffusion coefficient uh, which the formula of which we derived in just in previous class in transport phenomena either from uh, collision theory or from uh, um, uh, or from using the kinetic theory and times the v j minus v i ok. And then if we assume that there are equal diffusivities then the problem becomes even more simplified uh, that which is not a very good assumption in, uh, in combustion because uh, uh, anyways then uh, dj is equal to d then this uh, essentially goes out and you have you get an explicit relationship for v i which is nothing but minus d ln of y i which is the fixed law of mass diffusion ok. And then uh, a better assumption is that this is this is not a, um, a good uh, assumption that to assume all the equal diffusivities. A better assumption is that you assume that d i j is equal to d i n where n is an abundant species. Now, this is a better assumption because when you consider air breathing uh, combustion uh, um, that is combustion in air of course, the abundant species is nitrogen. So, we can assume that all uh, we will not consider the all diffusivities, but we will also only consider that that a species i diffuses in a bulk uh, environment which is uh, d i j is equal to d i n and this bulk environment is mainly composed of nitrogen. So, then this makes sense this is basically d i n uh, and then we can write this v i that is uh, the species diffusion velocity of i uh, this i th species diffusion velocity is nothing but minus d i n instead of d times the gradient of ln i. So, yes this was one uh, instead of this d i j storing all this d i j we are storing one. So, that was very cheap uh, computationally inexpensive, but uh, this is little more expensive we need to store uh, instead of um, uh, i j n cross n, n cross n you need to store basically uh, n. Uh, so, it reduced the dimensionality of the problem, but still uh, this is much better. And uh, but then uh, assumption is that we assume rho d is equal to constant or rho square d is equal to constant depending on the situation. Now, before we go into this, uh, 
uh, now uh, we need to talk about uh, something uh, we are talking about uh, this thing that is the pressure um, we need to have uh, some discussion on pressure that uh, um, we want to show that uh, that uh, in general the pressure inside this uh, in inside a combustion system or any system as such when the Mach number is um, small uh, that uh, the pressure uh, the pressure variation is small and we will talk about in this classes except for scramjet uh, combustion um, uh, our Mach number will be small and this we can consider we will show that uh, um, pressure uh, does not change too much um, inside a combustor actually it, it decreases slightly instead of uh, subsonic combustion and that leads to the slight uh, reduction of the thermal efficiencies uh, as you know um, but the pressure drop is actually small. Now, why is it small and, uh, and because the pressure drop is small we can consider it to be a constant pressure process but we need to show why is it so okay. So, this is a very very important and a key assumption in combustion that goes on and uh, you see um, in reality it cannot be uh, it is not possible for pressure to be constant you know, because uh, whenever there is a flow acceleration of course there has to be a pressure change you know, because it is a acceleration and there is a force. But um, uh, as you will show that uh, even when uh, for large acceleration the amount of pressure drop required is very small. So, uh, and here of course in combustion the acceleration of the fluid um, uh, basically comes from the heat release all right. Um, uh, so, what are we talking about is that suppose why why we are even call, call, talking about you know, flow acceleration. Now, suppose you write the continued equation rho times u rho 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 times u 2 right and uh, suppose this uh, you have a uh, duct and you have a flame like this and this is rho 1 u 1 and this is rho 2 u 2 rho is the density u 1 is the velocity uh, upstream velocity this is the downstream velocity ok and this is the flame and of course, because this density is small your u 2 is large right. So, this is cause this is the flow acceleration. So, this flow is now accelerated into this flow. Now, um, uh, but then the question is that um, does this mean how much this flow acceleration how much uh, pressure drop does this uh, require ok or does this cause uh, that we want to show that uh, that is not large. And um, you see as such in the momentum equation where pressure appears uh, this uh, mm, uh, as a as a because in a momentum equation uh, your gradient of pressure is the force and your left hand side is essentially the acceleration. Um, so, for acceleration there is a uh, this, uh, this gradient of pressure uh, is uh, which has to be non zero, mm, but we will show that this uh, this is small right that is the purpose of this uh, of this exercise. Mm, uh, uh, so, let us uh, let us go into that. So, for that we will uh, we'll consider just a one dimensional flow and uh, we were discussing this uh, what we are discussing here that is this rho 1 u 1 and this is a flame say rho 2 u 2. Uh, we'll we'll discuss this in a small elemental form in a in a uh, in a you know by writing an ordinary differential equation. Okay, now we under one thing is that in the momentum equation, uh, in chemical reactions, the momentum is essentially conserved. So in the momentum equation, you do not have any idea whether there is reaction or not, except for the fact that the density changes, and the density changes causes the acceleration using continuity, and that um, acceleration is has to be reflected in the momentum equation, right? So, um, except that uh, there is no uh, there is no explicit chemical reactions happening inside a uh, inside a momentum equation. So, anyways, so uh, we will consider if we consider this one dimensional uh, equation uh, momentum equation. This is the equation. So, it is rho uh, the, the if we write the one dimensional momentum equation uh, with the removing all the complexities, we can just write it like rho times u times du dx is in a steady state of course that is why you do not have any transient terms is equal to minus dp dx right. And so, this is the thing. Now, uh, let us consider that uh, you define non dimensional variables u cap is equal to u by u 0, you define rho cap is equal to rho by rho 0. These are like some reference variables we will come to this uh, soon and p cap is equal to p by p 0. So, now if you do this uh, incorporate this non dimensional equation we will say that we will find that uh, you will get uh, what uh, you will get this uh, rho 0 u 0 square u cap d u cap d x and here you will get minus 
P0 dP cap dx. Okay. So, rho 0 u 0 square by P0 times is equal to u cap du dx is equal to minus dp cap dx right now if you write we can write p0 is equal to rho 0 rt right uh, this is the actual gas constant uh, particular gas constant and uh, we can write p0 by rho 0 is equal to r So, P0 by rho 0 is equal to RT and we can multiply with gamma on both sides then this becomes essentially is equal to sound speed right. This is C0 square ok. So, uh, then what we can do is that if you multiply by gamma here, gamma here then this equation becomes uh, then this equation essentially will become gamma times u 0 square by c 0 square is equal to uh, sorry times u cap d u cap d x is equal to minus d p cap d x. Okay. Now, let us remove this and then this becomes gamma times Mach number squared right and then this is u cap d u cap d x is equal to minus d p cap d x ok. So, this is non dimensional acceleration this is non dimensional pressure gradient. So, what does this tell? This tells that if you want to change if you want to create an or acceleration by order 1. So, this if this is an order 1 quantity ok, you need to have a pressure gradient or the or the resulting pressure gradient which will happen depending on the situation uh, is order Mach number squared ok. So, the pressure drop that you get in combustion from an order 1 acceleration of the flow is order Mach number square. So, if the Mach number of the flow is small typically Mach number in subsonic combustion in a gas turbine is 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 it is order Mach number square. So, 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 means 0 0.01, 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 means 0 0.09 ok. So, the pressure drop becomes very very small as a result we can essentially neglect the pressure drop inside a, a subsonic uh, when there is subsonic combustion. Okay. So, this is what we have just done that uh, for subsonic flows if we consider this equation that is the momentum equation rho u du dx is equal to minus dp dx and then if we non dimensionalize we essentially see that for creating order 1 change in um, acceleration you need order Mach number square change in, in pressure. Also we can show it in a different manner let us decompose the pressure this uh, non dimensional pressure as now as the as a background pressure P 0 x t plus uh, uh, fluctuating pressure P uh, 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 dynamic pressure P 1 x t. Now, we assume that let us say that if P 0 is order 1 let us say that P 0 this is an order 1 quantity and this is an order Mach number Mach number square quantity ok. Now, if this is an order Mach number order 1 quantity then this will be essentially we can write this as minus d p 0 cap d x minus d p 1 cap d x ok. So, we will clearly see that on the left hand side we do not have any order 1 quantity right. So, then this essentially becomes 0. However, on the left hand side we have an order Mach number square quantity right. So, for that essentially then this becomes the full thing that is gamma Mach number square plus times rho cap u cap du x u cap d x. So, this is it. So, therefore, we see that gradient of P cap 0 that is a background pressure is essentially 0 or P 0 is a function of time only it is not a function of space. So, essentially we call this P 0 R rho R t is equal to thermodynamic pressure and P 1 x t is a dynamic pressure ok. So, uh, that is uh, uh, the isobaric assumption. So, as a result in for subsonic combustion for all practical cases we our momentum equation is essentially gets very much simplified because uh, your main thing that is the gradient of pressure 
uh, that is very small for all subsonic combustion uh, problems. And in both in non premix flame as well as in premix flame, we will assume that the pressure to be essentially constant unless otherwise mentioned. Of course, in certain special cases in a gas turbine combustor or an afterburner or in a rocket engine or in a, uh, you can have um, uh, something called thermoacoustic pressure oscillations, then the, this P1 uh, fluctuates very heavily. Uh, so, that is a different condition, but uh, uh, other in other cases uh, we will have, um, uh, have a small pressure drop and that small pressure drop will be neglected. Of course, you remember that in a we will show that later in a scramjet instead of a pressure drop you have a pressure rise and that pressure rise can be large because now it is not a order of Mach number uh, Mach number square not very large depending on the situation that um, but this is that those are high Mach number flows. So, remember that this is only for this isobaric assumption that is the pressure is constant inside the inside a combusting flow. Uh, is only true for a for a for a subsonic uh, conditions. Uh, so essentially, combustion is like characterized by strong change in temperature, but very small change in pressure. So it's a essentially a constant pressure process. Uh, this flow is at constant pressure, but not at constant temperature. Okay. So that is up to this class, and uh, later we'll go into derive the simplified forms of the different equations, especially the energy equation, because as you see that the momentum equation gets very much simplified uh, in, uh, in these cases for at least for simple flames. But of course, if you want to solve the flow inside a combustor, you need to do a complete CFD. You need to solve the complete momentum equation, and to uh, uh, to take the different terms for, um, arising from the pressure, small pressure gradients. Uh, you need to account for those also. You need to account for. Um, the radiant density variations you need to account for uh, the viscous uh, forces and of course you need to account for the flow acceleration okay now, but uh, for the simplified cases that we'll consider here at least in the beginning of this uh, in the next few courses we'll consider pressure to be constant but of course temperature will be strongly changing and uh, using this uh, constant uh, pressure or the isobaric assumption we'll derive uh, simplified forms of the energy equations and the species equations and we can see that how we'll, we can be coupled to uh, uh, simplify the total set of governing equations. So, thank you very much.